You tuned in to the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT LP 95.7 FM in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault. Today is Tuesday, April 6th, 2021, and we're sharing local news and resources focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is episode 59. I'll be wrapping this show at the end of this month with the last episode airing April 27th. I started it March 17th, 2020, thinking I'd continue it for a few months. Ha! It's been purposeful work, and I hope it's been of service, and I need to begin reclaiming the chunk of time it takes to produce live public affairs radio each week. Thank you so much to all who have taken the time to speak with me, listen to the show, and provide it feedback. I'm truly grateful on many levels. This month, I'm touching base with folks in a few key sectors, business, local government, and nonprofit, to talk about what's next as we begin to emerge from this pandemic. My guest today is Heather Caswell, who's celebrating 34 years operating the wardrobe in downtown Davis. We'll talk about business during a pandemic, what she's learned in more than three decades of operating one in Davis, and what her work is centering on now. And we'll get to that interview in just a couple of minutes. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the passing of Davis icon, Kathy Speck, who weathered a long battle with ALS and cancer. A musician, artist, LGBTQ activist, a community fixture loved by many, Kathy will be dearly missed. I'm sending love to her partner, her family, and her legion of friends and her little dog, Maisie. Yesterday, UC Davis Health announced that starting today, anyone aged 16 years or older will be eligible to schedule a vaccination appointment for COVID-19 at UC Davis Health, whether or not they are a patient there. Visit health.ucdavis.edu to learn more. This announcement beat the state's anticipated deadline of April 15th for those 16 and older by more than a week. Yolo County Public Health would like to offer a reminder that all the vaccines, whether the two-dose Pfizer and Moderna versions or the one-and-done single Johnson & Johnson dose, offer strong protection against COVID-19. The vaccines lower the risk of hospitalization and death, as well as the risk of severe infection. Residents still need to wear masks in public and physical distance, even if they've gotten the vaccine. Why? Well, of Yolo County's 220,000 residents, public health says approximately 70,000 have received a first dose. That's about a third of us, but that means 70% have not, and the risk remains substantial for many. And this week, the first instance of the South African variant was discovered in an unvaccinated individual in Davis. It's important to note that discovery was made possible by the genotyping and gene sequencing work done through testing via Healthy Davis Together. So all of these numbers include vaccines administered not only through the county, but through various medical entities and pharmacies. And new this week, Costco and Walmart have been added as new locations to get vaccinated in Yolo County. There's one county vaccination clinic, public clinic tomorrow, and look for more public first and second dose clinics starting next week. Please note the vaccine supply is still limited and may delay you getting an appointment or vaccine. You can get more information and assistance by calling 211 or toll free at 855-866-1783. All right, Yolo County remains in the orange tier with little change in our metrics this last week. Our adjusted case rate is 2.3% and our test positivity rate is 0.6%. The state will have additional announcements tomorrow, but there's supposition we could reach the yellow tier as early as April 30th. The threshold metric for yellow is a test positivity case rate of 1%, which even our public health officer acknowledges is really difficult to reach. But changes in the state's blueprint, which drive those tier um, assignments, are coming, and those are based on the health equity quartiles. That's a measurement designed to ensure that California reopens its economy safely by reducing disease transmission in all communities. If the threshold metric changes percentage, we may not actually be that far off. Stay tuned as we move through the month. Let's take a moment for music, and we'll be right back with our interview. Heather Caswell has been the owner and style curator of The Wardrobe, a boutique in downtown Davis, since 1988. 
She's the founder of Save Davis and the UCD Women's Heart Health Alliance. And in 2021, she's co-founded a group called the Davis Community Vision Alliance. They're launching a Make Every Day Earth Day Shop Local, Shop Davis Community Awareness Campaign and Celebration on April 22nd. And finally, she is my dear friend of many years, and so it's a treat to get time together today. Thanks so much for joining me, Heather. Thank you, Autumn. It's so nice to be on the air with you. <laughs> like for all the great radio coverage and interviews you've been doing this past year. Uh, thank you. It's been a while since I've gotten a chance to interview you uh, about anything. So, because, you know, the show is, is primarily about COVID-19, we're going to talk about some other things, but we all know it's been a challenging year for businesses, and that's on top of many challenges in this age of Amazon and big box retailers. Can you tell us a little bit about how the, the wardrobe pivoted and what this past year has been like for you? Sure. Um, so, the wardrobe has been down 25% because of covid uh, however, the PPP and state grants have really helped us to survive. Mm. I'm happy to say um, that has been, you know, incredibly valuable and instrumental to our business still being, um, yeah, in a place of sur- serving the community. And did you, um, I know I've, I've been into the wardrobe recently, you limit the amount of customers, and did you also begin to offer any um, virtual services? I think you did. <clears throat> yeah, I started offering um, virtual style services so people could um, work with me via Zoom or FaceTime. Nice. And, or they could work with me via text, and I could um, help them choose some wonderful things and I created style packages, and um, I have an email blast that also helped them stay informed of what was available and how things were proceeding in terms of, you know, our practices. And um, and yeah, we, you know, we've managed to stay in relationship and in business with the community. And my staff has also been quite amazing and. Even one of the staff members um, made over a hundred masks that we made available for sale, and um, you know, all my bookkeeping started to become virtual in terms of you know changes that the wardrobe started to um, put into place, and and yes, and so we've um, you know managed to offer fashions um, in creative new ways and take advantage of a patio and a um, a tent that we have now, so several of our racks are outside, mm-hmm. and Healthy Davis Together, you know, was a wonderful program, too, that kept us inspired to, um, and even helped fund some of the things that we needed to yeah. uh, re- yeah. recreate our business model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Good to be flexible. Well, yeah. So one of the outcomes of this time is that you've, you've been increasingly focusing on the needs of small businesses in downtown Davis, and you're part of a new effort called the Davis Community Vision Alliance. Uh, what is this effort? What do we need to know, and why should we all care about it? Well, uh, the Davis Community Vision Alliance um, is building vibrant community together and um, and it's been formed as a result of um, recognizing that um, the community's voice needs to be um, better heard and better um, understood and so basically they're the voice of the small businesses and I think the grassroots community um, at large and so This all came together um, post-Measure B, just um, a wonderful, wonderful group of people um, that I I can't thank enough. Um, uh, Several people that were very active with the Measure B awareness campaign, and um, we just all came together. I want to actually say thank you to some of them Mm -hmm. because they have been instrumental in in helping form this wonderful and, and um, alliance, and and they all are, yeah. Um, so I would like to give thanks to um, Nancy Price, 
who was a former um, planning commissioner, and um, Larry Gunther, Sunny Shine, um, Karen Beardsley. Um, we have high school students and Rebecca Blum and Lily Ma, college students. And um, yeah, just a wonderful group of people that, again, have been um, very committed to to helping sustain our community and recognize and help the community learn about the value of um, small business. And we're going to have a website called the davisconvision.com that we're launching um, on Earth Day, the 22nd of this month. Mm -hmm. And um, this website will offer a shop local, shop Davis awareness campaign on the value um, of shopping locally and um, how <clears throat> money stays in our community and actually specifically when you shop at locally owned businesses you leave three times as much money in the local community as when you go into a chain store mm -hmm. such as Target or Walmart and more even more than 10 times when you shop at Amazon. So again, more than 10 times when you shop at Amazon. And, and so again, shopping locally is, in my opinion, a way of not only supporting your community, but practicing, you know, making Earth Day every day Earth Day. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so our, our alliance will be celebrating something called Make Every Day Earth Day on Earth Day um, in front of the wardrobe on 117B Street from 5 to 8 p.m. And we'll be featuring keynote speakers at 6 p.m. And we'll have free music. And um, a wonderful local band called Boco de Rio will be playing. And, um, yeah, we're, we're really seeing this as our first public opportunity to kind of become better known and supportive to the community and the idea of inspiring community to become informed shoppers and to shop with intention and care. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an ambitious effort. And knowing you, I'm, I'm not at all surprised by the level of detail and attention that's that's going into thinking this. But I do I do have to ask, how does this effort differ from the work being done by, say, the, the Downtown Business Association or even the Chamber of Commerce? Because those are two active groups that are focusing on business here in Davis. Yes, that's a fantastic question. And um, I'll do my best to answer it. Um, let's see. So I, I definitely appreciate all the things that the the two organizations do for our community, um, but especially in the, the transition out of COVID and the reinvention and um, the revitalization of our community, um, it seems as though we, we need, you know, an organization that's bringing new vision to the community. And quite frankly, I think that they've um, become too institutionalized at times and unable to properly, you know, represent the voice of the community. So we're, we're trying to, um, again, offer, you know, more transparency and offer an opportunity for um, playing a partnership role and playing a role of um, being an advisory alliance and really being in touch with the community and um, in a way that will hopefully affect grassroots change. And it seems like that doesn't really easily come from existing institutions, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. even the city of Davis. And so we're, we're excited to be, again, um, offering um, a, a fresh and a new way of um, looking at things. So are there other uh, business owners joining you this, in this effort? I, I know I asked that question because a lot of the names you tossed out, as far as I know, they're not 
um, downtown business owners. So that I'm curious about that point. Yeah, there are. Um, so when Measure B was becoming um, an area of, you know, concern for many small business owners, mm -hmm. I, I got in much closer connection with at least 30 of them. And, um, and so I would say that, yes, we have a growing number of small business owners that aren't formally active at times. Some are a little more active, but um, are definitely um, engaging with um, our work. And I have a book um, on how to build a vibrant community that I've been making available mm -hmm. um, to, like, dozens of business owners and community members. And I've been getting even a little coaching from Quint Studer's team um, that helped write the book. And, um, and so I'm, you know feeling like uh, I'm getting the support needed to um, help be a, a voice and spokesperson for, um, again, hopefully a third way. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the word vision is literally in the name of your organization, Davis Community Vision Alliance, and you're getting ready to, to launch um, – it sounds like a, several things on April 22nd on Earth Day. So I want you to think forward a, a year out. What is your vision for what your first year of work with this organization w will accomplish? Can you, um, can you tell us about one or two hoped for outcomes? Yes, um, I think that our organization is very, very interested in um, maintaining and strengthening vibrancy. And I think that comes from connection. It comes from celebration. Mm -hmm. And so we will be, again, involved with a celebration of Earth Day. And we plan on having a annual festival that's going to hopefully take place this October um, and going forward annually. And it would be called the Spirit Festival. And um, so those are ways, I think, to strengthen vibrancy, um, and also we, we are playing with the art in relationship to building vibrancy, and um, there will be, I think, some very fun um, endeavors coming forward. Um, we, we even made the hummingbird, I guess, um, part of our um, symbol, and we're looking at a, um, a mosaic project perhaps, as well, to beautify and to inspire the community. So um, we, we also hope to um, make a difference for the elections and um, have um, something to, um, a, a voter's guide that would be valuable to help um, people become greater informed. And uh, we are seeing the possibility of uh, gatherings and even in front of the wardrobe um, mm -hmm. on a monthly basis for, again, people to be engaged in the conversation um, and the exploration of raising the civic IQ. Yeah. That's an interesting phrase, raising the civic IQ. I like it. Um, so l let's talk for a minute about gatherings and celebrations because I know you've been very conscious in your language about that. Currently, under you know public health guidelines, gatherings are are not allowed, but small scale celebrations are if they're outside and socially distant and, and all of that. So you're very carefully describing um, yeah. the event on the on the twenty second as a celebration. But more than that, I just, I just want to circle back to the fact that you, you've been in business here in Davis for 34 years, and that's not only an incredible um, accomplishment, it, it's, you know, there are very few businesses here who, who can claim that. Redwood Barn is, is one coming up past 30 years, um, you know, but there aren't a lot of others of you around that have, have weathered all the storms and all the economic, the recessions and everything. So first, just let me pause to congratulate you on that. It's significant. Thank you, Autumn. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. 
The second is that, and I know this firsthand because Davis Media Access has partnered with The Wardrobe to bring Amy Goodman to town. I've partnered with you personally to bring author Heather Ashamara to town. You, you have really set up The Wardrobe to be a gathering spot for many years. So I don't think for you personally, I don't see this as new it's just kind of an evolution of your own personal ethos around business and and community yes i think that's a beautiful way of saying it and i do see small businesses as um instrumental in um individually and collectively again rebuilding and um making our community as vibrant as possible and i'm just thrilled to uh again be in a, a location that's allowing me to do it safely and um joyfully great okay one more time let's uh let's give the website for the davis community vision alliance the coming yeah, website yeah. <laughs> yes it's the davis community com, and it, it doesn't have the actually it's davis community vision dot Okay. And again, it will be going live by Earth Day the 22nd with very valuable information um, on the value of shopping local as well as some other fun information and visuals. Okay, sounds good. And then lastly, um, the URL for the wardrobe in case people want to find out more about what you do there. And yes, um, it's, so we are thewardrobe.com. And people can um, even join us and sign up for an email if they'd like to stay in touch with us that way as well. Okay. And yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks so much for uh, joining me for a chat today and for all you do for our community. And I will uh, stay tuned and keep an eye on, on what you've got cooking up now. Oh, I so appreciate it. And thank you again for making time to um, help inspire the community to know more about this wonderful group. All right. Thanks so much. Take good care. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wrapping up that interview with Heather Caswell, longtime small business owner in Davis as uh, the owner and style consultant at The Wardrobe. I'm going to take just a minute for music and come back with a couple more updates for you. All right, Heather mentioned the uh, Healthy Davis Together effort, which is so famous. We were profiled in the New York Times. And uh, I always like to, to share some information about them. We are a partner in the effort as well. When it comes to COVID-19, symptom-free doesn't necessarily mean virus-free, and asymptomatic individuals have helped this virus and its new variants spread fast and far, which is why Healthy Davis Together urges weekly testing if you come into contact with others. The collaborative effort between UC Davis and the City of Davis provides free saliva-based asymptomatic COVID-19 testing to anyone who lives or works in Davis. I want to note if you are symptomatic, the county will help you out with testing there. Healthy Davis Together offers testing sites at Marguerite Montgomery Elementary in South Davis, the Mondavi Center at UC Davis, the Davis Senior Center, and the Veterans Memorial Center, also both in Davis. Testing is quick easy and painless. You can find out more at healthydavistogether.org. In addition, federally qualified healthcare center Communicare serves as a key conduit for getting vaccines to the county's hardest to reach populations, including the uninsured, undocumented, and low income residents. Communicare serves as many as one out of every seven county residents providing primary behavioral, dental, and prenatal care regardless of insurance status or ability to pay. And last month, Communicare and Healthy Davis Together partnered up. Healthy Davis Together is providing staffing and administration for a Communicare vaccination clinic that opened in West Sacramento, which is, if you don't know, it's home to some of the most culturally diverse and disadvantaged communities in our county and really our region. For Again, for info on any of these services, visit healthydavistogether.org. I do think it's pretty wonderful that we've Healthy Davis Together has been able to expand beyond and out into uh, some other areas in the county. All right, you have been listening to the COVID-19 Community Report on KDRT in Davis, California. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and I'll be back next week with Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor. Thanks so much for tuning in.